Shirley Ravenna. I'm an ocean engineer at Florida Atlantic University's Center for Ocean Energy Technology. And today we're deploying several ADCP buoys, acoustic Doppler current profiler instruments. These instruments sit on the, on the ocean floor and look up and measure the ocean current all the way up the water column. And we have these at four distinct lo locations. And this in combination with the ocean surface current radar system we have will give us volumetric flow of the Gulf Stream. So we have an idea of what, what the environment is like for our experimental turbine project. On this particular buoy, we have one ADCP here, and it is connected to an acoustic modem. And it uploads information to the acoustic modem for, it has about three weeks worth uh, of data memory and then we can come out here once every three weeks or however often we can come out and upload little fragments of data periodically throughout the nine month period that this will be deployed and after nine months we'll recover the buoy and, and get all of the information off of the memory in, on the ADCP itself. We're, we're traveling eastward here. Our first deployment that we have is near shore. The reason we're deploying near shore is to capture any sort of boundary effects of the Gulf Stream to help us understand some of the dynamics that go on further offshore. We have three other locations. One drop is right at the average location of where what they call the core of the Gulf Stream is, or the axis. That's where the, the mean velocity is the largest and most consistent. And then five miles on either side of it, five miles to the east and five miles to the west, we have another ADCP to measure the velocity. So basically we get a measure at the core and at the two extremities. So we can capture meanders and variabilities as well as we have the set near, right near shore so we can capture that, that edge effect, if you will. We have just uh, put our second ADCP buoy in the water and are getting ready to, to deploy it right now. Because we're in the Gulf Stream, when we deploy the buoy, we have to stop moving, but the Gulf Stream drags us off location. So right now, we're just steaming back to the location where we're going to drop it. Once we're there, we're going to swing the anchor out over the back deck using the crane and release it, and that anchor will pull the buoy down to the ocean bottom at which point it'll start taking measurements and we'll be able to use an acoustic modem that's much like your telephone modem that you use for your computer to download the, the data on period, periods of uh, between uh, one and a half weeks up to three weeks. So we can get that data and analyze it without having to pull the buoy to the surface. Now it's really neat how we actually pull this buoy to the surface. There you see suspended are two white objects. Those are what are called acoustic releases. They're gripping that cable that goes through that yellow shackle and what happens is when we want to recover the buoy, we come back on station and we acoustically, basically using sound waves in the water, trigger those releases, which then release that cable. And that cable then slips through that ring and pops back up. We have two of them in case one doesn't work. You always want redundancy because we're in about a thousand feet of water and there's no way for us to go down there without sophisticated vehicles, which will cost a lot of money. So redundancy is really the key here. At that point, basically the buoy comes to the surface, we recover it, bring it back on board the boat, replace the batteries if necessary, and then basically we're ready to redeploy the system. But we have a, a life expectancy of the system for about eight months between refurbishment. So every eight months we bring it back up, we pull the batteries out, put new batteries in, put new zincs in which stop corrosion, hook it up to the anchor again, and then redeploy the whole thing off the back deck much like what we're doing today.